India is seriously positioned to be a Vishwaguru in health tech and that is super exciting. I had a lot of confidence in building something out and I felt like at that time I had both technical capabilities of writing code myself. In India you make decisions as a family and my family was supportive enough to uh, you know just say go out and spread your wings. You realize that we wanted to build a a high tech extremely deep IP AI company. Problem that the radiologists were available in few number. Access to video is, is not there. Hi, I'm very happy to welcome uh, Kalyan, a young entrepreneur who at 25 started a cutting edge health tech company, 5C. Kalyan is a computer science engineer followed by a postgraduate in law and then decided to become an entrepreneur in tele-radiology space. Kalyan, welcome to this show. Thank you for having me, sir. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah. I want to start with uh, your journey of being uh, an entrepreneur at a very young age. Uh, you had a great qualification in computer science. You got admission to one of the top management institutes, which happens to be Indian School of Business. Yes, that is correct. One would have expected somebody at that age to jump into a post graduation or take up a job instead of getting into the big, bad, hard world of entrepreneurship. Yes. What really made you choose entrepreneurship over a corporate career or an MBA? Sir, it's a great question. And when I look back, I would say that it starts with um, after my college and my post graduation. I had a lot of confidence in building something out and I felt like at that time I had both the technical capabilities of writing code myself and also the people and the personal capabilities to sell stuff. I realized that uh, and at that point in time entrepreneurship was you know really taking off in the country you were obviously leading the charge as one of the top guys in the field and so when I when I saw the opportunity to to actually build something myself I went headlong into it and of course I mean so many things had to fall in place you know in India you make decisions as a family and my family was supportive enough to, uh, you know, just say go out and spread your wings and see what happens. As a, as a sportsman myself, I felt like I learned a lot about people management just from, you know, playing in teams. And I felt like I had those abilities and I thought I would enroll myself into the school of hard knocks rather than a school of business. And it's been an incredible journey. So. Yeah, uh, you chose this tele-radiology field. Yep. Okay, right. So you started with a problem that uh, the radiologists were available in few number access to radiologists was not there. Absolutely. So you solved that problem by providing tele-radiology solutions. So uh, when we started uh, 5C, when my co-founder and I, Syed, started, we realized that we wanted to build a, a high-tech, uh, extremely deep IP AI company. And we, when we started, we actually realized that there was no data. Very difficult to work with academic medical uh, you know, entities in India, the data is not structured. And so we actually started tele-radiology basically out of a necessity to be able to become a good data company. So you're saying the idea was always to become a data company and a product company, but this was a... So it was a reverse business. pivot. It was a reverse pivot. And so we had to get all the data so that we could become a good data company, so that we could become a good platform company, so that we could actually put our hat in the ring and say, we can build great AI. And so the problem that I was solving, everybody thought that the problem that AI is going to solve is that radiologists are not available. But I could solve that problem even with radiologists because the internet was already accessible. And yeah. so we started with teleradiology. Then like you correctly said, moved it to a platform where any radiologist could join 5C, give a report to any customer, everybody's active on mobile. That required an engineering thought process uh, that changed the... So in the beginning, the sales guys were the kings of the company. And then product and engineering become, you know, the most important departments. And then AI in this case. So, so that better. flexibility is important. Men, yeah, men, important. mental nimbleness is... This and also comes from your sports, right? You of want, course. You want to win the game. You need to but, know what it takes. Uh, but, but what it takes is maybe different based yep. on climate, based on weather, based of on the pitch, based on competition, all of the different. Of course. So the typical thing associated with technology companies does not really play in healthcare. And, and also the time frame is much larger. Yep. So how did you navigate this space? How are you able to manage to convince uh, venture capitalists, you have some very good top names there, 
uh, to invest in you when we started so the the large health tech companies that were getting funded and that are still doing very well were in my opinion not exactly health tech they were more health commerce companies mm. e pharma companies yeah. you know connecting doctors and patients building ehr for you know departments are more health commerce they're not actually Or enablers to B to B. Exactly, but they're not actually in the care pathway changing things. Right. And the moment you decide to be in the care pathway changing things, I mean, I've met with maybe three hundred, four hundred investors to get one or two yeses. But I, I mean, that's the power law game that you have to play. And I think the important thing that I learned was that if you know an investor and their thesis is that we is that they believe that products in the clinical space using high tech. can actually scale to big businesses that's the person you need to go talk to and so i realized that as you know after falling a lot we all know the challenges of healthcare in india what do you see this evolution of technology generative ai aml ar vr all of this as tools to be able to solve this vexatious indian healthcare problem my uh, framework for this sir is that if you are working in the care pathway in healthcare there is an xyz axis cost quality axis and there are technologies that usually move it in one or two ways some of these new completely transformational technologies generative ai uh, deep learning have the opportunity to reduce cost improve quality and improve access at the same time indian healthcare data has massive volume as you know yeah. but also has incredible variety so we have the diversity and the genetics of, uh... of of indian data allows us to actually build much more robust algorithm and so that are applicable even in situations where all the data is unavailable and so, so what you are saying is because of the breadth of the data and yep. the sheer quality of data the yep. data sets that we have and the algorithms and the training that we give yes. using the data sets yes. can be taken to everywhere country. and including the fact that today you know with dpdp coming in and at the same time india is seriously positioned to be a vishwaguru in health tech and that is super exciting yeah. we are able to build algorithms on orders of million data points while our Counterpart you know counterparts in other, in other, other countries, countries are in tens or in 50000s of data points and this already gives us such an advantage so i mean i am sitting here in india in bangalore now telling you that we have a fundamental advantage in this space and that's that's just an extremely exciting thing for us so if you are in if you are in the care pathway using data to build in health tech this is a great time to do it thanks elian very nice speaking to you thank you